Hey guys, welcome to the new Class Fit Sugar. My name is Charlie Atkins, I'll be your trainer and I'll be leading you through a 30 minute full body strength workout. This session is sponsored by Under Armour. No equipment is needed, so let's get ready to fire up those muscles. All right, let's go ahead and start with our warm up. Coming down onto the mat, we're gonna start with hip circles. So I want you to come onto your elbows and knees, not your hands and knees, on your elbows and knees, nice flat back. All the way to do is take your right knee through a giant circle. These are slow circles. We wanna make sure that the body is nice and warm for our full body strength workout. Try spreading the toes in the shoes and pulling the heel a little bit closer to the booty. And then all I want you to do is reverse the direction of your circle. Try to go nice and slow and controlled and don't dip over onto the left side of your body. Everything that we do on the right side today, we're gonna do on the left side. So let's go ahead and switch legs. So left side, all I'm doing is pulling my heel close towards my booty, staying on the elbows, not dipping over onto the right side of my body, taking the left knee through a giant circle. Really try pulling the knee towards the armpit or the elbow. And then we will also switch directions on this side. So go ahead and just reverse the direction of your circle. This is a warm up that I do before every single one of my workouts because it feels so good. I hope that you can agree. Make sure you're not falling over into the right side of the body, press into the elbows. And then let's move into our next warm up, which is going to be adductor rock. So right leg is straight up to the side. And then all I want you to do is press the hips forward and backwards. One thing I don't want you to do is have the foot on the mat. So I want you to keep an active ankle, leaving the bottom of the foot off the mat. And then we're just pressing the hips forward and backwards, feeling a nice stretch all throughout the inner thigh. If you can, align the hip over the knee. But if you're super flexible, you might find that that alignment just isn't giving you enough of an inner thigh stretch. So you can always change that up. Let's go ahead and switch sides. Toe pulls towards the shin, hips are shifting back. And then all you're doing is just rocking the hips forward and backwards. If you aren't really feeling anything in these adductor rocks, what you can do is you can press the inside of the foot down into the mat as you press the hips forward and backwards. Don't forget to breathe. And then as you're moving the hips forward and backwards, try to keep a straight line from the head all the way to the tailbone. From here, we're gonna come into a downward facing dog. I'm gonna show you my favorite trick for a downward facing dog. Roll the top of your mat, elevate the heels of your hands, and then lifting up into a downward facing dog, bend the knees, push the tailbone to the sky. And then I want you to think about spreading your hands nice and wide, pushing into the ground, almost like you're sliding into home plate. If you want a little bit more, we're just gonna to start to lift one heel up and then the other. So toe stays pulling towards the shin. If you notice, as my leg lifts up, I have a straight line from my head all the way to my heel. If you have super tight hamstrings, just try bending the knees a little bit more, always pushing the tailbone to the sky. Good. From our downward facing dog, we're gonna come down onto the mat into quadruped position. You can go ahead and unflip the mat. In quadruped position, tuck the toes under, shoulders over elbows, hips over knees, and then I just want you to hover off the ground while engaging the core. If you have a little bit of a curvature in your spine, I'm totally okay with that, but right now we're trying to warm up the core as we get ready for this strength workout. One thing that I see a lot in bear holds is your booty is usually too high, so I really want you to think about engaging the core. Your quads might burn a little bit, but don't worry, we're almost done with this, and you're just hovering right off the ground. Give me one deep breath in and then let it go. Let's do a core set, making sure that our abs are ready to go for this strength workout. We're gonna do all these exercises two times through. So lying down on the bat, mat, I want you to plug either your elbow or your hand into your left knee. Both toes are pulling towards the shin and then just the right side. We're gonna inhale, extend. Exhale, bring everything back to center. So these should be slow and controlled and I really want you to think about keeping the lower back pressed into the mat. If you want a little bit more out of this exercise, you're gonna push harder in this opposite hand that's holding onto your knee. But whew, if you are doing this correctly, then you're gonna to totally feel this all throughout that six pack. Inhale, reach, exhale, bring it back to center. And then let's do the same thing on the opposite side. So hand is pressing into thigh, toes pull towards the shin, you're gonna inhale, extend. Exhale, bring everything back to center. So if you notice my heel is only a few inches off the ground, I'm really thinking about pressing my lower back into the mat as I extend and I'm making it harder on myself just by pushing into that 
right leg. Good. A few more seconds here. Inhale, reach. Exhale, good. From here, let's go ahead and start to warm up the upper body. Go ahead and grab opposite elbows. You're gonna come down into your plank position. Feet are gonna be hip distance apart. Hands are down, and then all I want you to do is replace hand with elbow. Hand with elbow, replace elbow with hand. So plank walk. <sighs> Keeping the body nice and controlled. Some people also call these commandos. I like to call them a plank walk, because if you notice, our body is in a nice straight line, and we're just lowering down and lifting up. <sighs> replace elbow with hand, hand with elbow. And what you're trying to do is not let the body rock. So you wanna keep the body as stiff as possible. From there, let's go ahead and flip back onto our back. Doing a lot of core exercises, you'll love it. Right leg's out, left knee is up, the arm that's up is the knee that's up. And then all we're doing is just rolling up onto that elbow, reaching for the sky. So keep your right or your extended leg toe flexed, and you're just reaching up, pressing into the elbow, lowering down. So quarter get up, a half get up would be coming all the way up onto the hand, but for now we're just coming right up onto the elbow. Keep the foot that's extended. Make sure that ankle stays flexed, toe stays pulling towards the chin, onto the opposite side. So the knee that's up is the arm that's up. Left arm is out. <sighs> Reaching up to the sky, slowly lowering down. <sighs> Try to keep your extended leg on the ground and you wanna reach, reach, reach for the stars with that opposite hand. <sighs> Rolling onto the elbow, working all of the core. <sighs> From here, we're gonna head right back into those dead bugs. So recenter yourself on your mat. We're gonna start with left arm, left leg, toe pulls towards chin. Big inhale, reach. Exhale, bring it all back to center. Inhale, reach. Really think about your lower back pressing into the mat. Keep the ankle active by pulling the toe towards the shin. You're reaching the body in both directions. And if you wanna make it harder on yourself, just push into that bent knee as hard as you can. Oh, switch sides. So really trying to give as much tension as you can between these two limbs and then really trying to extend and create space between the opposite limbs. Keep looking up towards the sky, toe pulls towards the shin, inhale, reach. Use the exhale to bring everything back to center. Inhale, reach. Oh wow, it's getting tough. Almost there, give me a few more reps. We're gonna flip over and do those plank walks. Let's go ahead and come into that exercise. So you can use that trick that I taught you by grabbing opposite elbows, placing them down on the mat, hands down, feet back. So replacing hands with elbows, elbows with hands. One thing that you're trying to do in this exercise is you're not trying to rock. So I don't want you to rock. That's gonna not to bring you any joy to your lower back. But if you wanna bring joy to your core, you're gonna control the body from moving side to side. So I'm just replacing hand with elbow, elbow with hand, reaching up, coming down. These don't have to be fast. In fact, the slower you lower yourself down, the more you're gonna feel that in your core and stronger you're gonna get in the arms. Coming into our quarter get-ups, it's kind of like, this is what I call the get out of bed exercise. Cause you know, it's like you're rolling out of bed every morning. So these are the get out of bed muscles that you're building right here. Rolling yourself up. The knee that's up is the arm that's up. Make sure that this shoulder stays out of the ear. One way that you can do that is by pressing the elbow down into the ground. Let the breath help you. Good, and then we'll switch sides. Same exact thing. Knee that's up is the arm that's up. Leg is out at the side. Keep looking up towards the ceiling the entire time. If you start to feel your neck get tight, it's probably because you're trying to hold your head up, so let your head reset in between each rep by letting the back of the head touch down on the ground, rolling yourself up, lowering down, good. Perfect, give me one more. All right, let's go ahead and come into our first round of strength exercises. We're gonna do two times through, so let's go ahead and get started. First exercise is going to be a one and a half squat. So feet are hip distance apart. I just want you to lower down in your squat, come up halfway, lower all the way back down, and then come right back up to standing. Lowering down, lifting up. So by doing this one and a half squat, I'm trying to encourage you to slow down your exercises. One thing that you need to keep in mind in a squat is that the knees are always driving away from each other. Chest is always staying up. 
lifting up halfway, coming right back down and just repeating it. From a side view, I really want you to focus on keeping the heart up. So lowering down, halfway up, all the way back down, all the way back up. Should start to feel this in the quads, maybe a little in the booty. Coming halfway up, all the way down. Good, give me one more. Perfect. Go ahead and come to the end of the mat. We're gonna be doing an inchworm. So all I want you to do is think about keeping hips high up to the sky. If you have tight hamstrings, bend the knees, walk, walk, walk. Coming out to your inchworm and coming right back up. Standing up. All the way out. Plank position. Keeping the hips moving up towards the sky as you move forward and backwards. So not only is this a core and an upper body exercise, this is also gonna help you stretch out the hamstrings, warm them up for whatever it else is we, we decide to do today. Lifting up. One thing I want you to try not to do is I often see a lot of people walk with their hands out. If you want to protect your wrist, I want you to think about keeping fingertips forward, especially the middle finger. That's the main thing I try to focus on is making sure that my middle finger is always pointing forward. Good. Now from there, let's go ahead and walk out. I'm gonna get a little bit more upper body. From here, I want you to shift way forward, lower down, reach in front of you, pull back, push up. So all we're doing is a push up reach. To the best of your ability, I want you to try not to do these from your knees. So I really want you to encourage yourself to keep the booty tight, the core strong, the arms even stronger, lifting yourself up, lowering down. Now remember, none of these exercises need to be fast. You can do them nice and controlled, trying to get perfect reps every single time. You're gonna be balancing on one leg. Two things you can do, kickstand the back leg, and then all I want you to do is reach the opposite arm out. So facing forward, Hip shift back, you're cross-reaching, single leg deadlift. So this back leg is not doing any work. I want all of the work to happen in this front leg. If I feel confident with my cross-reaching single leg deadlift, what I can do is I can start to reach the leg behind me. So if you are a yogi, this is like a warrior three, you're just coming in and out of it. One thing I do want you to focus on, let's go ahead and switch sides is I want you to make sure that the back toe is flexed. So I want you to pull the toe close to the shin. So start with your kickstand, just till you get the motion of the exercise. And then if you're ready to add more, sometimes you lose your balance, you can start to lift that back leg up. Don't rush these exercises. I know we're doing this based on time, but I've built in enough time for you to practice getting stronger at all of these exercises. We did say full body strength, so that's what we're doing. So you can lift the back leg up, or if you feel more confident, you feel like you're getting a better workout, simply by pushing the tailbone back, reaching out in front of you, you can do it that way. Let's go ahead and come back to our one and a half squats. I want you to see if you can get a little bit deeper. Superwoman, pretend that you have a Superwoman logo on your chest. You want that Superwoman logo to be facing forward the entire time. Lowering down, halfway up, all the way down, right back up. Now that we have the motion figured out, I want you to make sure that all of your toes are pushing down into the mat. Good. Don't forget that little tempo at the bottom just to keep you in that pose or that exercise a little bit longer, help you get a little bit stronger each time you do it. Making sure all of my toes are pushing down into the ground. The entire time my knees are pressing away from each other. Good. Ooh, from there we're gonna come into that inchworm. So go ahead and come to the back of your mat. Whenever you're ready to go, remember, middle fingers forward. Whenever we don't have a lot of shoulder mobility, that's when we tend to start to see our hands going out. But if you're really wanting to get a little bit stronger, to have nice strong wrists, I want you to challenge yourself to grip the ground, middle finger forward, tailbone reaches to the sky. Now remember, after our inchworm, the next exercise are those push-up reaches. So at the end of our 15 seconds here, we're just gonna stay out in that high plank. Fingers forward, not sideways. Take these as slow and controlled as you want. This is my last one. I'm gonna go ahead and stay out here. Set up for my push-up. Now I like to shift myself forward, elbows point back. Reach, pull, push. You're trying with all of your might to build up your arm strength to not do it from the knees. So you lower down, reach, take a big old exhale, and let that be the one that launches you up off the mat. 
Another quick form cue. Elbows are pointed back at a 45 degree angle. I don't want a T, I don't want an I. I want an A. An A is an apple. Good, one more. And then let's come on up to standing. Kicks down that back foot. Another way that you can learn how to do these deadlifts properly is I want you to pretend that you have paint on your hand and you're just pushing as hard as you can into that front thigh. So I'm pushing my tailbone back. I have paint on the front of my hands and I'm just pressing into my thigh. If I'm ready for more, I want to challenge my hamstrings and my glutes a little bit more. Woo, good thing there's a wall there. Then I can challenge my balance, challenge my strength by letting all of that work go into one leg. FYI, single leg deadlifts are a very challenging exercise. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I'm having so much trouble. They're a troubling exercise. So you can paint the front of your shin if you'd like, or if you're looking for a little bit more, you're seeing if you can balance. Opposite arm reaches out. So a good way to remember single leg deadlifts is the leg that's back is the arm that's reaching. I'll say it again, the leg that's back is the arm that's reaching. Keep the back ankle active, toe pulls towards the shin. Stomping down into the ground to get yourself right back up to standing. All right, now from there, cross reaching lifts, single leg deadlifts are done. Let's go ahead and head into another round of exercises. FYI, we're gonna be doing all of these three times through. But you're gonna come down into a half kneeling position. Lift yourself up and you're gonna hold. That's it, ice. Isometric split squat. So the difference between a split squat and a lunge is a lunge is dynamic. Split squat is a one-legged squat. So all we're doing is we're holding one leg in a squat and we're balancing ourselves up off the mat. You're almost there, I talked you through it. Stand on up and then go ahead and switch sides. If you feel like you have tension in that knee, what I want you to do is hinge forward a little bit at the hip. So start at the bottom of your exercise, lift yourself up, feeling tension in the back knee, Pull the hips forward a little bit, but straight line from the head to the tailbone. If you can, drive all 10 toes down into the mat. You can put hands down in a low V like you're a cheerleader. Fire up this back glute. Keep the shoulders out of the ears. You're almost there, keep breathing. All 10 toes down into the mat. Good, lift yourself up. That one's always a burner. I know that squats and lunges are very challenging but they're in almost every single workout. Let's go ahead and come down onto the mat. Push up plank position, shoulders over the wrist, elbow to the sky, wrist to the rib. So squats and lunges. We're just doing plank rows here, working on core strength. Try not to let the body rotate. Squats and lunges are in every single workout because they burn a lot of energy. They require a lot of energy. They're the biggest bang for your sweaty buck. So of course we're gonna include them in the strength exercise. And that exercise we just did, that isometric split squat, that's the one that's gonna help you land, or I guess you wanna land, yeah, land all of those exercises. From there, let's go ahead and bring the heart rate back up. We're gonna be doing under the fence, so you're just pretending that there is a fence right here, and you're just going right under the fence. So stand all the way up, switching sides. The goal of this is just to kinda of bring the heart rate up. It feels good in the hips. One thing I am doing in this under the fence is I'm pushing my tailbone back. I stand all the way up and I'm pivoting on one foot. Good, stay with it. All right, next exercise is love or hate. You can let me know in the comments below if it's a love or a hate for you. Crab reach, so come on down to the ground. I'm gonna give you options. Hands are pointed at, I wanna say, four and seven, if you know what that is. Now one thing I can do, four and seven on an analog clock. What I can do here, is I can touch my knees. So I'm balancing on one arm, one leg, opposites, touching knees. For my advanced friends, or if you're ready to upgrade your exercise, you go full extension. Full extension. So, one thing that has to happen, I have to spread open my chest. I have to have strong arms. Balance will come over time. So if you find that exercise super challenging, the good news is, is we're gonna do it two more times. Split squats. Now, you can do isometric, or if you're ready to upgrade, you're gonna do full split squat. So one thing that I like to do in my split squats is I think about pulling my feet towards each other as I lower down. If I have a pulling on that back leg, I'm just gonna hinge forward slightly, still keeping my head in line with my tailbone, and that's gonna take some tension 
out of that hip flexor. Back hip flexor, I should say. Switching sides, same thing. I'll face forward for this one. Half kneeling position is where you start. If you want to just do the isometric, you can. If you're ready for more, slight forward lean. Pushing through this front leg. So my working leg is the front leg. Back leg is a kickstand. Pushing through that front foot. Trying to push all 10 toes, that includes the back ones, down into the ground to get me up to the standing position. Don't be afraid to do a slight forward lean. Good. From there, back to our upper body core. We're doing plank rows, another trick of the trade. You can roll the top of your mat. If you feel any tension in your wrist, you're in that plank position. Shift the weight forward, elbow to the sky, wrist to the rib. Keep the elbow tight to the body. Challenge yourself to not sway the hips. So when I pull elbow to the sky, wrist to the rib, I don't want my hips to move. If my hips aren't moving, then my core is working. If my hips are moving, then I gotta work on my core. Another trick of the trade, go wider feet to build up strength. Almost there. Good. Come on up. Next to these under the fences. Under the fences always remind me of my youth. I was just, you know, going to the baseball field, whatever it was, and you're just, you know, sliding under the fence. So, don't lose your balance like I just did. You're trying to get a little bit of movement into your workout. Bring the heart rate up as you can. When you do strength workouts, one thing that people always talk about is they're like, I don't burn as, or I don't feel like I get that, like I do in cardio. That's because we're challenging your body in a different way. So here's your quick cardio moment of our strength workout. See if you can get the heart rate up. Good. Now coming down to your new favorite exercise, crab reaches. Remember, this one takes, takes some time to learn. Spread the chest, point the hands back, and I can start by touching opposite hand, opposite knee, or if I'm ready for the full thing, I'm gonna extend my leg, okay? They're both the same exercise. They both challenge the same thing. The thing that makes one of them different than the other is you're either extending your leg, causing more room for you to sway side to side, which is why your core and your arms gotta support it. Final round of these exercises. This right here is the meat and potatoes of the workout. Split squat. You can do isometric, just like we did in that first round, or if you're feeling yourself, you take that slight forward lean, and I'm just pushing through this front heel. Straight line from my head to my tailbone, whether I'm standing straight up, or I have a slight forward lean. Making sure that all 10 toes, yes, all 10 of them, not just the ones in the back, are pushing down into the ground. Good, you're almost there. And then go ahead and switch sides. So in a split squat, I find the easiest way to start it is on the bottom, because then I know that my limbs are in a really great position. Once I'm ready to go, I'll pop up, and I start to go for it. If this is not your first time doing this video and you're like, oh, I want a little bit more, you can add a little dumbbell right here at the chest. It's how you make these exercises more challenging for yourself, and this is a workout that is gonna age well. This workout is gonna follow you everywhere that you go. All these exercises are things that's gonna make you stronger. So you just keep, just keep challenging yourself. Coming into that plank row, roll the top of your mat, new trick of the trade, keeping the elbow, or the, um, what are they called? Heels of the hands elevated. Now when I pull, I don't want my body to rock. I'm trying to keep everything stiff. If I'm working on keeping everything stiff, I just go wider stance. If my stiff body is nailing it, I'm just gonna bring my feet closer together, okay? So that's how you turn exercises into more challenging variations. Almost there, good. This is our useful intervention, this under the fence. All you're doing, pushing the tailbone back, hinging at the hips, moving side to side. Get the breath involved, exhale as you come up. So again, I'm pushing my tailbone back. So I'm pushing my tailbone back, straight line from my head to my heel. I'm just moving side to side. Not quite a squat, not quite a deadlift, just me trying to get under the fence. Good, nice. Your new favorite exercise, crab reach. Final round, you have to do it. Remember, extended leg, bent knee, your choice. Take a deep breath in, side out. Come on down, here we go. Hands are pointed at four and seven, spread the chest. 
five and seven. If you don't know what that is, it's an analog clock. Just making sure the hands are pointed towards the uh, feet and not towards the head. Your choice, straight leg or bent knee. Which one feels better for you? Not which one is more challenging. Which one do you feel like you have more control over? Good. All right, coming up to standing. The good news is, is we've made it to the final round. And of course, I'm gonna send you out of here with some more core work. We've got two exercises, we're just gonna keep repeating them until you love them more than you love the crab reaches. First exercise is gonna be a plank spider. It would not be a Charlie Atkins workout if it did not include a plank spider. Just like I taught you in the plank rows, plank position, you're trying not to let the rest of your body move as you balance on one leg and you pull the knee up towards the armpit. Try shifting the weight forward. One thing that I see a lot is everybody's booty is too high. You want a straight line from your head all the way to your hips. Good, almost there. Don't worry, you'll do those again. Next one is a butterfly sit up. Come down onto the mat. Challenging exercise, I'm gonna warn you ahead of time. Sitting all the way up, touching the other side of your mat. If you're having trouble sitting all the way up in a butterfly sit up, what you can do is you can do a butterfly crunch, but I would rather you do a plank, but that would be a lot of planks. So a butterfly crunch is a great way to work your abs, but if you're looking for a phenomenal, amazing way, do a regular plank. Regular plank is one of the best core exercises. Good. Let's go ahead and flip over round number two of three. I told you it would go by quick. We've got this plank spider. Roll the top of your mat, push up plank position, not letting the rest of your body move. Now the knee does not have to touch the elbow or the armpit. As long as you can balance yourself on one leg, while getting a little bit of a hip opener happening. Micro bend the elbows, that's gonna make it more challenging. Shift the weight forward, make sure the booty is not up in the air. Good. Flipping over, right into our butterfly sit-ups. Soles of the feet together, knees out wide. Sitting up, touching the other side of the feet. Keep going. More challenging, keep arms reaching up to the sky the whole time. Reaching up. Keep going. Ooh. Almost there. Oh, all right. Let's go ahead. Come down. One more time. Plank spider. Push up plank position. You're bringing knee. Ooh. So close, so close. Keep going. Ooh. Ooh. Knee up, almost there. Less than 10 seconds left to go. Try not to let the booty go up in the air. Give me one more on each side. Good. Flipping over, butterfly sit up. Last one. Oh, sitting up, touching the other side of the feet. More challenging, arms stay up towards the sky the entire time. Let the breath help you. Come on, this is our last exercise. You're gonna push all the way through. Give me two more, if you got it. Oh, one more, one more, one more. Oh, and there you go. Let's go ahead and wind down. Let's do a quick little cool down. Roll the top of your mat. Let's stretch out those hamstrings, stretch out the upper body, bend the knees, push the tailbone to the sky. Just hold a nice sound dog. Whew. <sighs> feeling good, feeling strong, right? <sighs> hmm. So stay breathing, bend the knees, push the tailbone to the sky, and then push, push your hands down into the mat like you're sliding into home plate. If you have room and you have the flexibility for it, you can start to press the heels down towards the mat. But if you start to feel your upper body curve, take that bend in the knee. From there, go ahead and drop your knees down to the mat. Bring the right leg forward. So I'm in a half kneeling position, but it's not a split squat. And then all I'm gonna do is open my heart up towards that front leg, winding down. Now as many number of reps as you can get in these few seconds. Don't worry about going on my tempo. Do whatever feels good for you. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to rotate my body down to where I can maybe get my forearm down towards the mat. But if you're like me and you have tight hips, then just really focus on the actual movement that's happening as opposed to trying to get the forearm down to the mat. Oh. Let's do one more on this side. Go ahead and go ahead and switch. 
So half kneeling position, reaching up, trying to rotate, working on bringing the elbow down to the mat, but if it doesn't happen today, we'll just keep working for it. Oh, Start to feel the heart rate come down. Reaching up. Good. Nice. Now from there, let's go ahead and sit on your booty. You're gonna keep the knees bent, or you can have straight legs. I'm gonna take a micro bend of my knees, sit up tall, and then you can just go ahead and hinge forward, holding onto the ankles, the calves, the back of the thighs. You can touch the toes if you'd like. We're gonna take three breaths. I want you to inhale, lift the ribs away from the hips. Exhale, forward fold. Good, inhale, lift ribs away from hips. Exhale, forward fold. Let's do one more inhale, lift. And then on this exhale, go ahead and let your head fall, hands come down to the mat. Walk yourself back up. Coming down onto the mat, you're just gonna hug the right knee into the chest, extend the left leg out. You can roll the right ankle. And then go ahead and switch sides. So right leg goes straight, left knee pulls in, holding onto the shin. Try to keep the toe pulled towards the shin of the left leg. Take a deep breath in. And side out. Go ahead and release the leg. Bend both of the knees. Feet are about mat width apart. And then I just want you to slowly windshield wiper the legs. And then rolling over onto your right side. Go ahead and press yourself up to a seated position. Thank you so much for sweating with me in Under Armour today. My name is Charlie Atkins, and I hope to see you at another CrossFit Sugar Workout soon.